That is it, Truddle. You've crossed the line. I curse you to... Uh, when you use Java, you experience a ton of agony! Blah -ha -ha. Well, that's an interesting way to respond to a loss at sorry. I warned you not to play any games with him. I mean, he kind of gets very upset when he loses. So, Java and Agony. Javagony! Javagony isn't really an esoteric programming language in and of itself. Rather, it is a challenge that you do with an already existing language, Java. Also, here's Future Trouble One with a disclaimer. This video will not go over regular Java, so if you wanted to learn that, look elsewhere. Also, if you do not know Java or any other C-style programming language, this video might not make sense to you, and if you don't know programming in general, my entire channel might not make sense to you. The programming languages I talk about on my channel are supposed to be weird and bizarre, so don't be discouraged from learning programming from these videos. Thank you. In Javagony, all Java commands are valid except the following. If statements, else and else if, switch case, that question mark operator that I never use, for loops, and while loops. That includes the other way to do while loops. Oh, no, Java's basically unusable now. Well, cheer up, my little dinosaur friend, because guess what? It is still possible to control the flow of the program. In order to do that, I'll need to introduce you to try catch. Any code inside of a try block is run normally unless an exception happens. An exception is basically a runtime error, and if one happens outside of a try catch, the program just stops and prints the exception in a shade of red that screams, you did something wrong. If an exception happens inside of a try block, though, the program immediately jumps to the appropriate catch block and runs whatever is in there. If the try block runs successfully, the catch block is skipped. Now we have a basic way to do control flow. If we say divide an integer by a variable and that variable's value happens to be zero, the catch block will run since an arithmetic exception is thrown if you divide by zero. What? You're finding a way to make it more usable? Why I oughta curse you some more! Now where's my wand? Oh, looky here. Break! Man, I don't want this to be made even more unusable. Besides, try catch is explicitly allowed in Javagony along with recursion. Now, to demonstrate that you can still do things in Java without using any control flow statements except for try-catch, I will be creating a truth machine. Pause the video right now if you don't know what a truth machine is to get up to speed. The scanner is used to take in input from the console. The scanner returns a string, which is stored into a variable called x. In order to divide by zero, we need x to be a number. So x is converted to an integer using integer.parsint, and it is stored into an int called y. Next, the first and only try-catch begins. We set the variable z to 1 divided by y. Because this is a try-catch and we are dividing, the catch is run if y happens to be 0, since Java throws an arithmetic exception if we divide by 0. Inside of the catch, 0 is simply printed out to the console. If y is 1 or higher, meaning the exception is not thrown, the remaining code inside of the try is run. In this case, we call a method named run1. Run1 is a void method, and it prints 1 to the console. After that, it loops using the power of recursion! Recursion. Recursion, recursion. Recursion, 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 recursion. Recur- Now because recursion is done on a stack, one is not printed indefinitely because the stack overflows eventually. Attempting to google a way to recurse infinitely causes a bunch of stack overflow questions about how to not recurse infinitely to show up. Yeah, because those people are sane! Also, it's pretty fitting that stack overflow is the website that it brings up. Then again, it brings up that website if you google any programming question. Could we run this now? I'm getting impatient! You're always impatient! Now let's move on to the 99 Bottles of Beer program. 99 Bottles of Beer is actually not that difficult to create even with the Javagony limitations. Probably because, like, 75% of it is just printing text. A static integer containing the amount of bottles is declared before any of the methods are called. This variable is set to the value of 99, go figure. The main method simply calls another method. Now you may be asking, why in your right mind would you do that? Couldn't you just put everything in the main method? Well, yes you could, but I'm not going to. This program, like the previous one, only contains one try catch. The catch is supposed to run when we have one bottle of beer left, so we divide some random throw away integer by bottles minus one. Yes, I know, that pun was almost as bad as my voice acting. If bottles happens to be one and we subtract one from it, we get zero, meaning that if bottles is one, we divide by zero and run the catch instead of finishing the try. If the catch is run, the one bottle of beer verse is simply printed to the console and nothing follows. If the rest of the try is run, the regular bottles of beer verse is printed using the variable as the number of beers. The amount of beers is then decremented and the method we are currently inside of is called again. Hooray recursion! Yay! 
Hey, 99 bottles of beer on the wall! 99 bottles of- I mean, I bet you can't create blackjack! Blackjack! <laughs> One of the crucial rules of blackjack is that if you go over 21, your game is over because you bust. Now you may be asking. Okay, one, how do you always know when I'm going to ask a question? And two, how do you check if a number is greater than another without using an if statement? Well, in this example, no, this isn't the blackjack pro game yet, we will be checking if the integer b containing the value of 16 is greater than 21. To check if an integer is greater than another integer, you use, you guessed it, a try-catch. Normally, if you add two integers together and they go over the maximum value of 2,147,483,647, the integer will just round down to this maximum value. However, if you use math.exact, an exception gets thrown if you go over the max integer size. So if we add b and integer.max value minus 21 using addExact, the rest of the try will run if b is less than or equal to 21, and the catch will be run if b is greater than 21. We can test this by putting print lines in both the try and the catch. If we change b to the value of 30, we can see that it runs the catch now instead of the try. This way of checking if a number is greater than another is what I use in my blackjack program. A pastebin link to the source code for my blackjack program is in the description. The reason I'm not going through it here in detail is because the source code is over 200 lines long, and I don't want this video to be 15 minutes. Well, are you at least going to let me play the blackjack game? Sure, why not? I mean, I don't hate you after all. Yippee! Let me show you how this is done. <laughs> Beginner's luck. Anyway, see you later, losers. I'm gonna go bother someone else. Well, that was a friendly congratulations for a job well done. If you want to try out this challenge yourself, you can use a standard Java IDE like Eclipse or NetBeans as well as the standard Java compiler. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.